Hey everyone, my name is Pritam and you're watching Tech with Pri. Welcome to my channel and I'm back with another exciting technical video. And this is the 22nd video of our newly created technical series called ServiceNow Developer. So in my last video, like it was a very important one, you know that we are starting to develop our custom application, which is very, very important for your certified application developer or the CAT certification, right? So we have seen in the last video, like what is ServiceNow application? What is partner application? What is custom application? How they are different from each other, right? Then I have shown you some examples of ServiceNow custom application. And finally, I have discussed two of the application that we are going to build. Uh, one of them would be in this series that is the first one and the second application which would be a more advanced one so that would be available for the members right so if you want to explore this uh, application to complex one with me uh, again you can join the channel and also you will get other you know complex use cases and CAD exam questions video will come and there are so many other things will come to the member so yeah it's a very minimum subscription so you can join it anytime right so if you missed the video guys don't worry i'm gonna put the link in the description also you can find the link here on your screen please go and watch the video and you would be able to understand a lot of things like service now application custom application partner application and lot more okay okay so we are very close to uh, you know develop our service now uh, custom application our first custom application but before that this concept what we are going to learn today that would be very very important without knowing this concept we won't be able to build our custom application okay so let's see what we are going to learn in today's video all right so first we are going to learn about what is scoped application okay very important one and then what is private scope and global scope again this concept would help you to build the custom application and we would see that why we are going to choose private scope while building our custom application okay then i will jump into my pdi and i'll show you uh, you know this private scope and global scope stuff in my uh, service now instance okay uh, then very important concept of namespace we will understand again i'll show you by creating a namespace for custom application and you would see how it follows the structure so this video is going to be very very interesting right so make sure you watch the full video to understand each and every concept right because very soon from the next video we are going to work on our custom application right so let's start the video so scoped application so what does it mean it is an application that operates within a defined scope where a scope is defined it's isolating its data functionality and access controls from other applications in the instance so in a simple way, I have created a scope for my custom application, for my application. So whatever I'm doing, like dealing with data, data means we can consider like tables or any other configuration stuff like business rules, client script, uh, application stuff, modules, uh, access control, each and everything, different functionality. So each and everything we are controlling inside of our scope. So it is isolating from other scope, which is available from other application right so we would understand about it now we have two kind of scope one is private scope and another one is the global scope right so what is a private scope so each scope has a unique namespace so you would see in the demo i'll show you uh, that while you will create the name of this custom application each and every custom application name would be different the namespace would be different you would understand that when i'll show you next only accessible for the authorized user so to access the custom application so the table that you are creating inside of the custom application you need to give specific roles to the user so that they can access it right so each and everything we are going to perform while creating our custom application so don't worry on it we will create role we will assign role we would deal with namespace each and everything now it's very important that you understand the concept okay because in that video i won't explain you the concept i will just show you how it is working right then it does not interrupt core business service so if you are working on a private scope then all the work that you are doing that is inside of the scope right so you are not interrupting any other service any other core business service right also other applications do not interfere with its normal functioning same you can upload your application to the service now store remember that if you are working in a private scope then only you can upload your application whatever the custom application you are building 
to the ServiceNow store. Now, finally, delegated development is possible. So what is delegated development? So practically, I'll show this what is delegated development when we will build our custom application. But as of now, just understand this. Delegated development is a very important feature, right? By using which you can give a non-admin user access to develop something for a particular scope, right? So different roles are there. So again, I will explain it while doing it. But this delegated development is only possible in the private scope. This is not possible in the global scope, okay? and many more other important things are there now that's all about the private scope now what is a global scope so global scope there is no separate namespace so in the global scope there is no you know particular structure that you need to follow while creating the name of the you know global scope application so there is nothing like that accessible to all other global application so by the term you understand like global globally available so it's available for everyone with definitely level of access right and as of now, each and everything that we have dealt with, all the use case that I've shown you as of now, from all from the global scope. But in the application that we are going to build, and there, all the business rules, script include, each and everything that I'm going to do, that would be in the private scope. So visible to all users with appropriate permissions, like I said, change to global applications can potentially impact a large number of users and existing processes, right? Because it is not separated by a scope so there is a huge chance to impact large number of users and that is why ServiceNow introduced this concept of scope so when ServiceNow started in the beginning time so there was no concept of scope and these errors this conflict of namespace and all this stuff were happening there that's why they have introduced this scope stuff so you cannot use delegated development in global scope like i mentioned okay now application created in global scope cannot be uploaded to the service now store like i mentioned i hope now you get a clear idea between the global scope and private scope right now it's time to jump into my pdi and i will show you some things about a global and private scope okay all right so i am in my personal developer instance guys so you have seen we have something here right one is the application scope and one is the update set. So I've made a video on update set also, which is available in my service now system administrator playlist, right? Uh, I have explained what is update set and all those stuff. And also we have application scope that I didn't discuss about it. So this is where, so this is where it will reflect what is the current application scope you are working, right? So right now I logged into my personal developer instance. So I am in the global scope right now. Now, if I click on the application scope button, you can see I have different other scope which are available these are the out of the box right now let me switch back to any other scope so i will switch back to app engine studio scope so i can do that because i'm an admin so not all the users will be able to do that and being a service now developer you need to have the admin access to you know work on a different scope and stuff like that so now uh, you can see i'm in the app engine studio scope so now what is the change so now if i try to access incident table Let's see what happened. So I'll go to incident.list and you see, I can see the list of the record. Fine. This is also in global scope, I can do that, right? Now I will go to the table configuration. So configure. So because I am the admin, I can do that. You see now there is a message that this, rec this record is in the global application, but App Engine Studio is the current application. To edit this record, click here. So being an admin, I can click here and edit the record. But as of now, you can see I cannot edit this record because this record is in the global application. But right now, I am in the App Engine Studio application. So ServiceNow is not letting you access this, right? So now what I'm going to do is that I will open some table list. So sys underscore db underscore object. So you know uh, by typing this, I would be able to see all the list of the tables. So still I'm in the App Engine Studio, right? So I have added this application option here so that I can see which table is part of which application, right? So I will maybe uh, filter out the global because we are already tested with a global. So maybe I will check this one, workspace record type sector. So if I open this table from App Engine Studio being an admin, you can see this record is in the ITSM workspace, but App Engine is the current. So edit this record, we have to click. You can see application name is different. So same thing is here, right? Now, let me show you another table, which is now, uh, let me 
now let me open this one entitlement data okay this is under licensing engine okay so let me see so let's see now you can see we are getting some different message this record is in the licensing engine application cannot be edited cannot be edited the installed application licensing engine is private so you cannot edit this record being in app engine studio or any other application scope now i change my scope here to license engine okay and then i again reload the page and you can see now i can edit the record because i am in the licensing engine application so that was created in a private scope that means this application has some additional security measure in place to limit the access and modification not even by admin so they have to be part of this application so you see how important it is to work in a custom application so you can control all kind of security that you want and more about it we would see when we will uh, build our custom application so i know you guys are getting excited to start creating the first custom application in the studio app i am also excited to show you so be with me follow this concept first understand this and then trust me it would become very very easy for you okay so now let's go to the powerpoint and let's see about the namespace again another important concept and then i'll come back again and i'll show you okay now namespace you can see when you are going to create the custom application so the name of the custom application would depend on few things right so at the same time i'll show you in practical so i'm in the global application now i'll quickly open the studio app again about studio app and all these things i'll show you uh, just to give you an idea what its namespace is so if i click on create application okay uh, you can see it is asking for uh, get started on your new app so it is asking for the name okay again i'll explain this thing uh, so I'll give the name as uh, maybe take with free just for an example. That's our name of the application. So now if I scroll down, you can see the name of the scope. The name of the application scope is automatically being created as this X underscore some number, then underscore, then take with even it didn't take my full name. Why? Because you can see it can be mostly, you know, 18 characters. So it would take up to this point. Okay so now why these things are coming why by default even that i'm going to explain you now the prefix characters for a scoped application requirement scoped application always start with an x underscore prefix always start so whenever you see some application scope in your maybe in your office in your organization so if you are a developer or administrator then you'd be able to understand that this is a custom application for private scope it would be x underscore now next instance customer prefix the string is two to five characters long service now generate this prefix for each customer so this information actually stores in this uh, sys properties so i'll come here uh, let me go here and i'll open the properties table so sys underscore properties dot list so here i will search with that and you see this would be non-editable field this item is read only based on protection policy so you can't you know edit it so you see it's automatically generated as 570853 so that would be not the case if you purchase service now so you can have your own one but this is a default value that you have to use so if i go back here you can see x underscore this value is coming right then the name of your choice of the application so i've given an example like uh, x underscore then i choose the you know instance prefix as take with pre okay but also take with free name is also not possible because we have to choose between two to five characters right so just for an example i'm showing you here and then the application name as book rooms so it looks like this x underscore take with free underscore book underscore rooms right but we are in our PDI, so we have to use this. But don't worry, that doesn't matter. So I hope the concept of namespace is clear, guys. You won't forget it, right? I hope you have learned so many important things today, right? So please like the video if you find it helpful. Let me know in the comment section for any doubt, any query, right? And also don't forget to share this video with your friends and family so that it can reach out to many people. And in the next video, we would start working on our custom application. Okay, bye-bye. See you in my next video. Take care.